So we've recently just learnt about Newton's second law in terms of momentum and now we're going to put that into a calculation. So just remember that in grade 11 we typically used to use f net equals ma. Then in the previous lesson I showed you how we can take that equation, do a few manipulations with acceleration and eventually we end up with that formula over there where f net is equal to the change in the momentum divided by the change in time. So Kevin, how do we know when to use which equation? Well, if they're talking about, if they're just talking about force and things like that, then it's usually just ex this first equation. If they're talking about velocity and things like that, then it's usually the second equation. Why? Because inside this P formula, it's got a velocity. Oh, and the next thing is they also mention time. So here in this question, we've got a collision that lasts for 0.2 seconds. They're talking about velocity. And so this equation over here would be most useful. You could technically go and use the top one. You would have to use a equation of motion, find your acceleration, and then you would be fine. But let's practice our new grade 12 formula. So we know that F net is equal to change in momentum over change in time. Now we know that change in momentum is equal to mass times velocity final minus mass times velocity initial. By the way, there is another way to write that if you want. Because the mass is constant in both, you could say mass and then you could just say bracket VF minus VI. Another thing, this F and this I that I'm using, those don't represent a specific, for example, you don't have to like wonder uh, how do I find F or how do I find I. That F and that I just means final and initial. So you are welcome to write this part over here. You can write it like this or you can write it like that. I think most teachers use this option, but whatever's best for you. And then we know that that's change in time. So we can now fill everything in. It's 100 grams. Please be careful. In physics, we use kilograms. If it was chemistry, well, then we'd be using grams. So we must divide that by 1,000 first to get the mass. So that's 0 0.1. The final velocity, oh, and Kevin, you forgot. We need to always choose a direction as positive. So let's just choose to the right as positive. Why did I choose that? For no specific reason. It doesn't matter what which direction you choose. It's just something that you need to do just to help the calculation be a little bit easier. So we've got a tennis ball that is traveling at 15 meters per second to the right. Okay, so I'll do a quick little diagram. So we've got a ball going to the right. It collides with the wall and bounces back. So that obviously means it's going to bounce backwards at 13. It goes to the wall towards the wall at 15 and away from the wall at 13 meters per second. So the final velocity is going to be negative 13. Because I chose right as positive, but my ball is bouncing backwards to the left. So that's very important. Then minus, then I put a mass in the velocity in, so the mass is still 0 0.1. The velocity is going to be 15, the initial velocity, because it's going 15 to the right. And then the time, well, that is 0 0.2 seconds, and we do work in seconds. You can go ahead and then type everything on your calculator, and you should get an F net answer of negative 14. Now, Kevin, how can we get a negative answer? It's absolutely fine. The negative just means that the wall is going to be using a because what forces are acting on that ball in the horizontal direction obviously there's gravity and stuff in the vertical direction but in the horizontal direction there's the wall now the wall is obviously going to be acting to the left right because it needs to cause the ball to move to the left eventually so it's acting to the left and so what we did in this question is we chose to the right as positive and we got a negative answer so what this means is that therefore f net is going to be 14 newtons to the left. You don't have to go redo the calculation, you simply get rid of the negative. And Kevin, will I get the same answer if I choose to the left as positive? Well, definitely, but let's make sure. So, we're choosing left as positive this time, but I'm still going to draw the same diagram. We had a ball that was going to the right and then a ball that was going left. Its initial velocity is 15, its final velocity is 13. So, we now say F net is equal to M vf minus mv initial remember vf is not a v and a f it's just velocity and then the f just stands for final velocity and then over change in time so the mass is 0 0.1 the final velocity well the final velocity is 13 and it's going to the left so that stays positive then you always put a negative in between irrespective of your choice of direction that's how the formula works 
then the mass is still going to be 0 0.1 and your initial velocity is 15 but because it's 15 to the right you have to put a negative why because we chose right as I mean we chose left as positive we then divide by time you then type all of this on the calculator and let's see what we get we now get an answer of 14 but it's not negative it's positive and so we chose left as positive and so because our answer is positive we can immediately say left so notice that in both choices of direction we get the same answer for one of them you might just get a negative and then you just flip it over and change the sign